Hey guys, welcome back. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the arrays in PineScript. And arrays are a very helpful data structure that allows us to use multiple values or assign multiple values to a single variable. So first of all, let's define an array. An array is a data structure consisting of a collection of elements. Those elements can be values or variables. And each element has its own array index or key that we can use in order to refer back to array when we are using the array later in our code. In order to understand the arrays in PineScript, let's go towards the Pine editor. And here you can see that I have this indicator script open. So here I'm going to rename this to arrays in PineScript. And here, let me get rid of this. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to define an array and our array, we're going to call it bar ranges. And here I'm going to define an array, array dot new. And the type of our array is going to be float. As you saw, we had multiple types of arrays available. So the one we're going to use is float. And next, I'm just going to go ahead and add elements to our array. Now. There are multiple ways to add elements into an array. So our array is bar ranges. And as you can see here, when we define this array and assign this to this variable, then let me just show you again. So if I just go ahead and do this. So here you can see the suggestion or the this is asking me for two arguments. The two arguments are size and initial value. So if I define or if I give it a size default size let's say if i say the size of our array is going to be two now this array will only hold two values one at zero index one at one index and one at two index and initial value let's say if i just give it initial value of one okay so now this array can only hold three elements and the initial value that i have assigned to this array is one now, if I go ahead and plot this array on the chart to visualize it, how it looks like, I can do this by using the label function. And in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and use if bar state is last. This makes sure that we are plotting on the last array. I'm going to define a new label, label dot new. And here the arguments required are x, and x is going to be the bar index because we want to use the latest bar and the y is going to be the high and as for the label style we will give it a style of label style is equal to label style and i'm going to give it label left so now i have given it these parameters or these arguments and when we plot this on the chart we will be able to see a label but there is one necessary argument that we need to define that is what text we want to give our label so this text argument is important and necessary for this label function to work so i'm going to give it the text argument of array display okay and by using this forward flash and n, we can give a gap of one line. And then I'm going to concatenate this to str dot to string. And so the reason we need to use this str dot to string is because this data structure, this bar ranges variable contains the data structure of array. So when we want to use this data structure inside a string, we have to convert this data structure into a string form and the built-in function for that is this str.toString so now we can just give it the bar ranges variable and it will automatically add this to this string so if we go ahead and save it i'm going to call it raise in pine script as it's defined and then if i add this to the chart you'll be able to see an array So you're seeing this in a new window because 
here we inside this indicator function call we need to say that we want to overlay this to the chart so i'm gonna do overlay and i'm gonna give it true so now if i remove this and add it again to the chart the array will be plotted on this latest candle so as you can see here the initial value of our array is two for all elements and the size is two so this array contains two elements the index of this first element is one zero and the index of this element is one okay so in order to see it better i'm gonna size this text size or just size and size dot large so now if i save it we'll be able to see it a little bit better so as you can see here so this is the zero index this is the one index now as you saw we defined an array and we have displayed this array onto our chart now in order to add values to the chart or this array there are multiple functions and in this video we're going to talk about the three functions that we use in order to add values to an array first function that we're going to talk about is array dot unshift and by using this function we can add element to the array and the last element that we add will get the first position here so if i just go ahead and array dot unshift and here it's asking me for two arguments the first one is id and the second one is value so id is basically the variable name so the id is bar ranges and the value i want to assign it value uh, i want to assign it a value of three so now if we save it you'll see that there will be only one element in the array and that will be three now if i go ahead and add another so i'm just going to copy this copy and paste and if i again add another element that is the four so as you can see here the four was inserted later in the course so that's why it got the first position and if i just go ahead and do a similar thing array or i can just paste it and give it a value of five so as you can see here we have three values inside the array three four and five because five was defined as or because five was inserted later in the code it got the first position then there is this four and three so this is how you use the array dot unshift function to add elements to an array now you can use this function to add elements to any type of array that you have defined but you have to keep in mind that since we are working with the float values the values that are being inserted into this are float if i go ahead and try to insert a text value so let me just show you text so now we are trying to insert a string inside a float array so let's see what happened so as you see we got an error and this error says that cannot call unshift array with argument value text an argument of literal string type was used but series float is expected so since we already defined this array to hold the values in float so we cannot pass on the string elements to this array so now let me just go back and insert the five and this Will work like charm so this is the first function that we use in order to insert elements to the array the second function we use is array dot insert now array dot insert is used to add elements at a specific index that we want to use so if i have let's say this array which in which we have six and seven so we have this array in which we have these five elements now if i want to insert an other element at index 2 then what i can you do is use this array dot insert function and here it's asking me for three arguments the first one being the id and for our case id is bar ranges and second one is the index so at which index we want to insert the element and for my case i'm gonna use the index of two and what value do we want to assign so we can just give it value let me get rid of this value is equal to 
8. So at index 2, the value 8 will be inserted. And if I just go ahead and save this, you'll be able to see so that here you can see this 0, 1, and 2. So at the index 2, the value of 8 has been inserted. So this is the second function that we can use in order to add elements to the array. The third one is the array.push and this function, the array.push inserts the element at the end of an array. So if I just go ahead and use array.push and again the id for our case is bar ranges and the value that I want to sign will be 9. So now if I save it you will see that after this three another element will be inserted and that element will be nine as you can see here so again if i just revise there are three functions that we used in order to add elements to an array and those functions are array.unshift which adds element to the first in the first place at zero index okay and this array.insert by using this function we can add element to our desired index and then there is this array.push function which allows us to add the value at the end of an array. So this is how you add the elements to an array. I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will love to answer them. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.